<clears throat> the question we all were given last week, a very important aspect of our spiritual journey, if you understand it correctly. The question was, what are the most quintessential aspects of a goal? What are the most quintessential aspects of a goal? Now, as I did comment in the group, I was mightily impressed with the, the answers uh, that came and uh, very, very pleased to note the, the points. Now, just to just to present Can I request everyone to mute your microphones, please? Kindly mute your microphones. Okay, so the question I repeat again, what are the quintessential aspects of a goal? Now, firstly, let us go about defining what a goal is. A goal is that which is beyond your selfish, self-centered interest. That is the fundamental principle of understanding the goal. A goal or an ideal or a purpose in life means it has to be beyond your selfish, self-centered, egoistic interest. It must have a larger purpose. It must have a larger cause beyond yourself. Then and then only it qualifies itself as a goal. So what are the essential aspects, quintessential aspects to have a goal? A goal is something beyond your selfish interest. Now when you look at it this way, you would realize that most people don't have a goal in life. They don't have a purpose in life. They're all living a life without a purpose. Now, I'm not making a sweeping statement. I will justify it. It will be very clear at the end of the analysis that most people don't have a goal. But to begin with, uh, that which is opposed to a goal is to live a life driven by your own selfish desires. When you keep chasing your incessant demands, you keep chasing to satisfy your perennial needs and desires, that's a life which is opposed to having a life to satisfy or serve a purpose or a goal. So most people are just operating on their desires. You look anywhere around you, most of them are in this category. You don't have a, a purpose or a goal. Now, further you have to understand, when you say a purposeless life or a life without a goal means you are driven by desires, means you live a life predominantly by the mind. You live a life based on the whims and fancies. 
whatever your mind gets fascinated with something which draws your attention it catches your attention you fall a prey to you run behind it to acquire it to get it to enjoy it there's no guarantee what your mind falls in love with out there there's anything that your mind can fall in love with and whatever your mind falls in love with you run behind it with the object of acquiring it and enjoying it so that's a life devoid of a, a goal and when such one lead such a life a life driven by the mind has no specific direction or dimension you can say actions driven on the mind are directionless and why are they directionless because your mind has no direction you can't predict where your mind goes can you right now you are sitting in this class what is the guarantee you have that your mind will not leave the classroom can you give me a guarantee can you give me a 100% guarantee for the next hour or so your mind is with me how much ever you would love to be in this session that your mind i guarantee will not cooperate that is the very tendency of the mind it keeps rambling it keeps rushing it keeps jumping from one thought to other so it will run into different quarters it will run into different directions so the mind is just like a feather in a summer breeze and wherever the breeze goes it takes the feather so whatever draws your fascination whatever draws your attention you just running behind it just to get it and having got that what next interests you you keep running behind it that's the life of a person devoid of a goal now if you have been following me very closely you will understand that naturally it is the intellect in a human that conceives a goal so your ability to conceive a goal depends on how sharp is your intellect how profound is your intellect an intellect is a product of your wisdom how much wisdom you have that is that determines your quotient of your intellect so it is your intellect that actually envisions a goal it is your intellect that actually visualizes a goal conceives a goal okay so a life without a goal is to be driven on the mind which is no direction no purpose just satisfying personal ends and there is no end to that but when you work with a goal it is the intellect that conceives a goal and a goal necessarily has to be beyond your selfish interest one of my students came up to me and said once guruji my goal is to drive a bmw he said my goal in life is just to drive a bmw i said I wish you the best sir i said no all i can what have i got to do against him i said i wish you get a bmw and i and maybe you can take me for a long ride in it you know that's all i said huh? so we can go for a long ride that's about all but if someone just says that i my goal is to have a bmw or i want like to have a fancy car or i would like to have a a, a, a lavish bungalow or i would like to have a, a, a rich savings in my account if that's all your goal is you are very poor in your thinking you are very shallow in your thinking you are very gross you have not grown up to the higher echelons of a human being because a true human being can conceive a goal and a goal can be of two types one is an absolute goal another is a relative goal a true human being when i say a true human being a man of true wisdom a man of true character a man of higher stature can conceive the absolute goal of self realization and the goal of self realization is only one realization is only one 
which is you can call it brahman you can call it atman you can call it enlightenment you can call it moksha you can call it nirvana whatever name you give it that is the goal absolute goal and in indeed that is the very purpose a human being is born a human birth is only to serve that purpose of realizing yourself nothing else nothing means nothing else you have no other purpose than to realize your goal which is the purpose of self realization now how many in the mass of humanity would fall into this category of even even being able to conceive realization point not 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 person very small percentage of spiritual people can conceive self realization can conceive forget pursuit so if you are able to conceive and get a clear clear picture of what realization means you are blessed because you are able to identify with the goal you are able to connect with the goal you are able to attune to the goal so the purpose of life is to fulfill this purpose of realizing self yourself nothing else but even those people who can conceive realization need to have intermediate goals or known as relative goals relative goals are stepping stones to take you to the ultimate goal of realization so you cannot remember you cannot get to the absolute goal without conceiving relative goals so relative goals are are something which are intermediate which take you which lead you up to the ultimate goal of realization so for a spiritual sadhak it is very important to have a very clear realistic goal very clear realistic goal so if the if your goal is not uh, Uh, realistic then you are not a true spiritual practitioner you are only talking in thin air you don't mean business you don't go down to the grassroots level to do what is needed you just are flying in thin air a man who means business will say what do i need to do now what is my next step what is an immediate action i need to do so that i get to that point so he gets down to the to the core he gets down to the essential aspect of spiritual sadhana and that's what a realistic goal helps you a realistic goal is essential now how does one know whether you have a realistic goal because what is realistic for you may be unrealistic for me what is realistic for me may be unrealistic for you now whose standard would you take what is the measuring tool whether your goal is realistic or not now one of the most essential aspect of having a realistic goal is your goal must inspire you if your goal doesn't inspire you either it is too high or it is too low so your goal shouldn't be too high or too low it should be there somewhere in between which should inspire you which should motivate you which should trigger a course of action towards it this is important in fact i remember one of my students many years ago he asked me this question when he asked this question to be frank i must say i didn't have an answer somehow i said something and i uh, clarified him but later on i kept thinking because i was not satisfied and you would know whether you have given a satisfactory answer and later on i went back to him and said sir i think 
this might help you. And he asked this, Guruji, I've been doing this studies for so many years with you, but I don't find it inspiring anymore. I don't find the studies as inspiring. And the reason was, the goal has become stale. The goal has become stagnant. He did not lift the goal having reached there. He didn't raise the bar thereafter. So he got stuck. So what he was doing is not captivating him, is not motivating him, is not enthralling him, is not exciting him. I realized that after a close observation. Why is it happening in his case? Glad he asked me that question. I think it's more than 15, uh, 18, 20 years ago, this man asked me. And I, I still remember so vividly. I can't name the person, but I know that student, a very fine gentleman, he asked me this. So, a goal has to be realistic, not too high, not too low. It must continue to inspire you. Another important aspect when you have a goal, when you conceive a goal, is a goal must be within your capacity. Please mind these words. It must be within your capacity, but slightly beyond your reach. A goal must be within your capacity, and also it must be slightly beyond your reach. That's when it's a goal. I'll explain. Let's say an example. A sportsman. A sportsman is playing badminton. He's very good at it. He understands the sport. He has a passion for it. He's a professional. And he has done well to himself. He keeps winning on an odd tournaments he plays at the, the district level. He walks into any district tournament, there's a fair chance he will come out goal playing a singles match. Now, a realistic goal, as I've said, must be within his capacity beyond his reach. Now, if you say within his capacity, his capacity Within his capacity means if he is playing at the district level, he can't be thinking of Olympics, can he? Olympics is way beyond his capacity. So within his capacity, what is his capacity? You should understand. And also beyond his reach. So perhaps he should have in the next one year, he should find himself topping of, in the top of the zonal level of the country. He's just playing district, but he wants to represent the south zone, or the east zone, or the west zone. He wants to represent the zone. And he must have a certain time frame. You should be able to conceive or visualize how long you would take so timing also comes into the picture. You are able to evaluate how long you think it would take for me to get there. Hmm? So it's not too high. No, it is not very much within his reach. No, no. He should push himself. There must be that, that he should strive hard. He should push himself to get there. But not to the extent that he breaks. Not to the extent it tears him apart. No, not to that extent. Not too comfortable, not too easy, not too high, that it drains him out, he tires out. He you know, should not feel the, the strain which breaks him. Just enough. A couple of comments, I, I, I don't mind taking them. Um, a short term goal and a long term goal. Yes, there should be that time frame. So you should visualize uh, a clear path. As I've said, an intellect gives you a clear cut direction. A clear cut direction. And if you, it's exactly like a GPS. 
when you when you have a clear direction of a long journey if you say uh, you have you have to drive 4 hours to get to a destination you would clearly know if i maintain this pace and without any unexpected stoppages i would reach in 2 hours i would reach this destination so perhaps i could catch up for breakfast at that at that rest and recreation area sometimes i used to actually when i was in malaysia i used to drive down to singapore for classes not many times it's a long drive it's a 4 hour drive uh, 500 kilometers one way and then driving in singapore again coming back so it was a lot of toll but times i i found it convenient just to drive there and i would actually leave kuala lumpur 4:30 in the morning so there's less traffic and i'm up early so i would pace myself in such a way that by the time i reach midway it is almost 7 7:30 where i can stretch my legs and catch up with my breakfast and then carry on the journey so i know i would that's a short term goal intermediate goal and my ultimate goal is to reach my destination safely so say a person with a clarity of intellect he will be able to envision a goal short term and long term and he will also given contingencies there will be perhaps there will be a flat tire there will be a traffic jam because of an accident you should give in to contingencies and if you don't give in to contingencies you are into trouble because you have not anticipated accommodated all that so with a little experience you will be able to plan all that when you are giving time frame you know now how many of us would have thought that corona virus would have come and uh, you would have to wipe out 2020 from your lives huh? because i have done nothing in 2020 i i keep getting that message you know on a on a very sarcastic note i think i will strike off 2020 from my calendar because i have not done much i have not achieved much i have not traveled the world much i have not done this or done that so you'll have to provide for such contingencies okay um sinwas garu is saying goal should be time bound and our intellect needs to be flexible and agile to realign goal time to time yes that gets me to the the point which i would have brought out which is very rightly said sir that a goal must be dynamic it's not a static goal a goal has to be dynamic you are able to adapt to the situation and circumstances your intellect is very flexible in fact a true intellect is very flexible you don't become rigid in fact there is something called as a sense of pro- sense of value and a sense of proportion to the value intellect is not just sense of value intellect is also proportion to the value example a doctor not only knows the right medicine for the right disease he also knows how to moderate that medicine for the right disease is like if doctor says i think i only want you to take 0.25 dosage of tablet two times a day make sure it's only 0.25 dosage tablet twice a day morning and night and if the patient and he says come back to me after two weeks but if you have any concern get to me right away don't delay and after four five days you seem to have certain symptoms you are not comfortable you go back to the doctor you say doctor uh, uh, you told me this but i'm not comfortable ah uh, okay i expected that i think you should increase it to 0.5 dosage 0.5 dosage twice a day how long three weeks continue and then report to me that is proportion what is the use of medicine without proportion vis-a-vis what is the use of a value or a quality without knowing how to proportion it in different situations and circumstances i may live a life in a particular way but when i go to different home when i go to different places i must be able to adapt to different such situations i should be able to adapt to different circumstances isn't it that's very very important so a goal has to be very very uh, dynamic 
Okay. Um, yes, sir. Sidramandaru, you have something to say? We just got connected. We didn't want to say anything, Guruji. Uh, current was off. Right, sir. Good, good to have you back. But I'm sure uh, you will have uh, the um, the recording which will come your way. You will be able to catch up. But uh, going by the way you and Amma have answered, uh, I took a serious note of the points. Half my answer is what you both have said. So you have not missed much. Okay, I have actually given you the the video access as well. So perhaps if you are you want to, you can uh, enable your your video so we can all see you. Fine. We are getting connected. Yeah. So the sense of proportion and the sense of value and the sense of proportion to a goal is very very important. Okay. Now, Sai is asking further, only problem for me is how to select a goal. What are the basis to setting up a goal? Then we can plan on how. Problem is with why for me, which targets are worthy going after? That's a confusion for me. So, as I have said, goal is something beyond your own selfish interest. It has to be beyond your own personal desires. Please remember that. And you can you can conceive a goal or you can be inspired by a cause which which strikes a chord with your own personality, which inspires you. For example, you are in association with this knowledge. Now does this knowledge inspire you? Can you consider this knowledge as a goal, serving this knowledge as a goal, or using this knowledge to uplift yourself as a goal? I want to purify myself. I want to uplift myself spiritually. So it is, uh, or you want to say, I, I want to do, uh, I want to serve uh, the people. What kind of service I want to do? Would I want to do physical service? What I want to do material service, what I want to go and part my knowledge. Let's say I know you are from a, a, a technical background, you are a man of information technology. Would you want to go and teach this knowledge to people who can't afford that kind of fees to get educated with information technology? Today I had a young, young boy coming into our office uh, at the center and the little interaction I had with him, he said, I'm doing artificial intelligence. Isn't Rajima? She was also there. Artificial intelligence. And he and a smart young boy, I don't know whether he's there, he said he'll come for the session today. Artificial, let's say you have knowledge of artificial intelligence. Uh, it costs a certain amount of purse to go through that course. Let's say if you have that knowledge, I want to serve this knowledge to people who, who can't afford it. That is service. So what you have, what is it that inspires you with? So I can't decide, nobody can decide for you what inspires you, Sai. So you need to uh, be in your field of activity, what inspires you, all right? And you can achieve realization through that. There is no specific path to realization. It's like there is a mountain. The peak is one. There are 360 degree perspective. You can reach the mountain from any angle, isn't it? You can't say this is the only route or this is the best route. There may be certain preferred routes to get there. The safer routes or the easier routes. But you say, I don't have to follow the route. I can have any route, isn't it? You can choose any route to get there. In that sense, you can use your Swadharma. So you write down this point, sir. You use your Swadharma. Swadharma means what is your own nature. What is your own talent your own field that you are operating in, use that as a field 
to function unselfishly then you are already having a goal you know the the lowest goal you can ever have the lowest goal huh? mark this the lowest goal you can have is to serve your organization you are working for you have a come you are working under a, under a banner whether are you working for your own selfish purposes to get the perks and applauds for your own self advancement oh i only want to be in this company for a year or so so that i get certain experience and i get their company name in my profile i know people who do that they are only interested in jumping company to company only to get that i have worked in microsoft i have worked in helvet packwin i worked in bmw uh, if you are in automotive industry or i have worked in x company you just want to add that profile into your name so you use the company resources just to promote or enrich your profile i'm not saying you're doing that right but i'm trying to tell how someone would approach that but if you use that job as an opportunity to serve the cause i want to bring reputation to my organization it's all that matters is your attitude all that matters is your thinking understand so you use your swadharma to conceive something higher so the lowest is the lowest is i want to serve my company going with the example of automobile and you start raising the bar you want to contribute not just to a company you want to be very innovative you want to serve the automotive industry the whole humanity can be benefited have you not seen some guys doing very innovative things uh, i want to invent whether car can be driven on water with water not on water right? with water with oxygen i want to drive the car so he wants to bring a technology which can be universally applied with an attitude of serving mankind now obviously it will be patented you will get the rewards that's all right but you're not doing for that purpose you're trying to advance technology so that humanity is benefited so you can think of very high goals yes so glad you got that uh, sai so goal has to be very dynamic and it is the intellect that conceives the goal and it's also the intellect that makes your actions consistent to the goal it is just not having a goal for the sake of having are your actions flowing continuously as an offering to attainment of the goal that's important and what is it that ensures that your actions are going in the direction it is the intellect it is the intellect that channels your action and one of the essential ingredients of an action is consistency very rarely you find this quality sadly it is not an asian trait it is very much a a western trait you find this more prevalent in certain western countries you find they are very consistent whatever they do they are very consistent with it it's like if i have given you a paint job i have learned it in the ashram we had a fair uh, percentage of westerners foreigners were there especially from western countries who were my colleagues and we all uh, studied at the same time and i had observed it and also with knowledge understood it that if, imagine if you are given a paint job of a particular room and that room is carpeted so even before the paint job started you go about ensuring the essential the non essentials which is the carpet the, the certain 
fittings and furnitures in the room which can't be removed have to be protected from the paint. And the first initial two days we are just exhausting all the taping. <laughs> I would never have thought that. So taping it and that and this and ensure everything is protected. And then starts the process of painting. And after the painting is finished, ensuring all the, the plaster is removed, everything is done, spick and span, and the job gets completed only after all that is done. And that guy will not pick up any other job until that job is complete, which is not an Asian trait. Huh? Now we also call plumbers or electricians or carpenters to the house. You know it all, how our work culture is. I know of a, a relative of mine, they were going through a, a, a renovation at home and at what, what price they have gone through, the entire summer they were without air conditions being fixed because the electrician didn't finish his job and all the rooms had brand new air condition units lying in the boxes, not on the walls. Thanks to the inefficiency of they have taken a project, they will not complete it. They will start here, they will pick up somewhere else, they will go there, they will go here, they will do that, bits and pieces. And that culture isn't there. You don't honor work. You don't respect work. You don't want to give that grace to the work. You don't want to find divinity in work. So what brings you, what takes you to the goal is not conceiving the goal, is your actions must be consistent. And consistency is an aspect or trait of the intellect. Your actions are consistent to the extent your intellect is strong. If your intellect is weak, your actions become inconsistent. So when your intellect is strong, your actions are consistent. When your intellect is weak, actions become inconsistent. Now if we were to examine this statement, how is it that your actions become inconsistent when your intellect is weak? Don't worry, it's not a question for homework, but I can like to get you all engaged with. Any, any thoughts? How is it that your actions become inconsistent when your intellect is weak? As I have said, intellect and consistency are directly proportional. They are of same nature. I'm glad I'm getting the, the right answer. Sai says, mind takes over thereafter and then runs into different directions. Uh, Rajim also saying mind is stronger than the intellect and obviously the influence is felt. Rajim also says the same thing. Sai again says that when mind is weak, your intellect, when intellect is weak, you can't focus on the goal. Yeah, Sudhagar Garu, we, whomever you learn a lesson from, they are your guru. So even their the migrant workers. You can consider them as your gurus. Uh, so, uh, you are right. The, the reason why your action becomes inconsistent is because you fall a prey to the mind. And the mind draws, goes away in different directions. Even to concentrate in this class for one hour, you need a, a very healthy intellect. Eh? Let me say that. You must have a fairly healthy intellect to keep your mind in this classroom for an hour and a quarter. Now, how many of you, I don't want to ask, all of you will raise your hand. I, I can't uh, object to that. How many of you can claim that you are there in this classroom for the entire hour or so? Uh, Sai, so very, very upright. That is what I appreciate inside. Others are not like that, Sai. You know, they are not even. 
ஆஹ் சிவா இஸ் சேயிங் சோ தட் இஸ் அ சேலஞ்ச் ஆமா ரொம்ப கஷ்டம் இட்ஸ் சோ சோ டிஃபிகல்ட் இஸ் இட் now in a short term of an hour in a short period rather of an hour you can't keep the mind at the present how can you have a, a short term goal or a long term goal and keep that focus and that's where the sadhana is that's where the exercise of steady and reflection of this knowledge helps you shrinivas garu Uh, posed a question a little earlier how to overcome the influence of mind over intellect that's an ongoing challenge that is a challenge everyone goes through sir it's just that we are all going through the challenge at different levels you know the mind sadly is more stronger than the intellect so the fact is because we have never engaged our intellect we have never exercised it it has been remaining dormant so it is very weak so it's like your muscle if you have never exercised your muscle your muscle gets weak you have no choice but to gradually get on to action to exercise it to build the muscle and the shastras are the tool you use to exercise your intellect hmm? so you use this knowledge to strengthen your intellect so over a period of time it wouldn't take long um, and a period of if you do that every day regularly daily if you study the shastras if you reflect on it in a methodic way you will have a healthy intellect you will start developing that clear clarity i'm not talking of information sir we are all well informed we all know what to do but how many of us go about doing the right thing i know i should not do this i know i should not do that it's not the question of knowledge here huh? look at this uh, point in the power in the powerpoint we all have viveka we all understand what is right what is wrong to that extent we have intellect but we don't have that vairagya we don't have that dispassion we don't have that wisdom to abide by it even an alcoholic a person who is addicted to something he knows i as i keep saying the most qualified person to conduct a seminar on alcohol is an alcoholic he is very wise in alcohol he can do a seminar a webinar on alcohol he will give you the a b c d of alcohol what is all available what is the percentage of alcohol content in all the possible liquors everything he'll give you he knows it all in and out but only thing is he lacks the ability to control his mind so the one of the best way of knowing how much intellect you have got is to what extent can you control your mind if you can't control your mind that means you don't have a strong intellect as simple as that does your mind listen to you or you listen to your mind that's very important that's all that matters great sir i'm glad so intellect is that which gives you consistency action then consistently takes you to the goal now interestingly lastly i will take the example of myself i have been doing this i have been engaged in this study for a period of time close to 3 decades i have been doing it in fact almost 3 decades now the study is the same but what has changed and i must say my inspiration for it is getting stronger and stronger and stronger day by day the same concepts the same ideas repeated i don't even know number of times i can't even count the number of times these ideas keep floating the ideas keep uh, revisiting i keep quoting these ideas i keep talking about it day in and day out the action remains the same 
but the goal for which I am pursuing has been dynamic, has been truly dynamic. So when I started my journey, this knowledge fascinated me. The purpose with which I got to this knowledge was something else. Five years later, the knowledge was something else. Ten years later, twenty years later, thirty years later, the goal is not the same. So if you want to raise the goal, you don't have to change the action. The action can be the same, whatever be the action, but in this action, I can seek that absolute goal, absolute goal of self-realization, which is what I am behind, nothing short of it. I may die without achieving it, but I will only get that. I will only strive that, nothing short of it. And that kind of a bull-headed attitude I have got, none of you can convince me to consider anything other than that. Nothing else matters. Nothing else. I might associate myself with everything else, but my primary goal is to get to realization. And there is every ounce of this knowledge, every droplet of Vedanta, every thought of this idea is only trying to tell you, remind you of the goal of realization. And you need to do a lot to get to that goal. And in order to do that, you must ensure all your contributory factors are conducive to the goal. I can't have goal of self-realization and, and I am wearing tone jeans. Huh? I can't understand. I, in fact, right from a very young age, I think I have been very allergic to genes. The moment I say genes, I am very allergic to. I don't know. Uh, and that too, wearing something which is tone is something unacceptable. And that is the trend today. So how can I wear tone genes and say, my goal is health realization? So whatever I do must Resonate with my goal. Isn't it? Whatever I associate, whatever I do, the kind of food I eat, the kind of music I listen, the kind of activities I do, everything must resonate with the goal. And a classic example of that is an ambassador of a country. An ambassador of a country represents the nation, isn't it? When the Indian ambassador is positioned himself in Washington, D.C., he represents India in United States. When the ambassador speaks in United Nations, India spoke. It's not Mr. or Miss so-and-so spoke, India speaks. That's the strength they have because of the identification with the country. Now, thereafter, on a weekend, let's say the ambassador has taken a weekend off from work and he has gone to a local pub in, his, in, in, in Washington. He has gone to a local pub, not a local pub, a prestigious club. What club? Hard Rock Club. Correct, huh? Shiva, Hard Rock Cafe, eh? a club bar, Hard Rock Cafe, 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 so you go to a Hard Rock Cafe and then thereafter what? It is a weekend and then what happens? Our friend gets over intoxicated and he finds himself in a little bit of trouble, he gets into an argument, he gets into a some kind of trouble with people there and the next morning the papers are flashed with the Indian ambassador in a brawl. 
it is not that he is disreputed himself but he has brought disrepute to the nation isn't it now that is what is identification everything that you do every action thereafter must resonate of the goal that you identify with you cannot afford to do anything that takes you away or interferes or disrupts you towards your goal that is called clarity atma buddhi prasadajam i have mentioned this phrase other day also atma buddhi prasadajam the clarity born from one's intellect a blessing a blessing from the clarity of one's intellect it's a true blessing to have one's intellect strong then everything falls in its place everything is so streamlined everything is so chosen atma buddhi prasada jo hmm. so these are the few elements or quintessential aspects you need to consider when you can see the goal i i could have missed a point or two but it gives you a fair idea what are those quintessential aspects okay are you all on the same page with me all all clear perfect let's get on with the text we will do verse 19 today yogarato va bhogarato va sangharato va sanghavihinah yasya brahmani ramate chetam nandati nandati योगरतो वा भोगरतो वा संघरतो वा संघविहीन यमणि रमते चेत नंदति नंदति नंद वन ऑफ द मोस्ट फेमस वर्सेस ऑफ भज गोविंद वेरी वेरी ब्यूटिफुल very very uh, very very philosophical huh? but the but the problem is don't go about practicing it huh? <laughs> because this verse is not a practice this verse is a state you reach the previous verse was a practice the previous verse spoke about a uh, a man of true dispassion suramandira tarumula nivasah शैया भूतल मजिनम वास एक्सेट्रा हिस इज रिसाइडिंग अंडर अ ट्री इन अ टेंपल स्लीपिंग ऑन ग्राउंड एक्सेट्रा रिनाउंसिंग ऑल पोजेशन एंड एंजॉयमेंट हियर इज अ मैन हु हैज गिवन अप हिज पोजेसिवनेस टुवर्ड्स हिज पोजेशंस एंड एंजॉयमेंट हियर इज अ मैन ऑफ ट्रू डिस्पैशन सो व्हेन यू हैव प्रैक्टिस द डिस्पैशन यू रीच अ स्टेट ऑफ वर्स 19 एंड द टाइटल ऑफ द वर्स इज you will find that source you have got to that very fountain head of peace and happiness the source of bliss so the dispassion is the source of peace and bliss in fact in the i am just trying to uh, get away from this for a moment in the in the 12th chapter of the gita in the 12th chapter the last three words of the 12th verse 12th chapter the last three words of the 12th verse he says tyaga shantim anantaram i'll write it for you all tyaga shanti anantaram which means peace immediately follows renunciation tyaga 
Shanti Anantaram. A man who lives a life of renunciation, he will find himself peace and bliss. Exactly the same message here he said. A man of dispassion will find himself, he revels in happiness, not just once, he says, thrice he says, Nandati, Nandati, Nandatyeva, he says. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, so, the translation of the verse, Yoga Ratova, one may revel in yoga, which is spiritual discipline, or Bhoga Ratova, Va means, or you may be reveling in sense enjoyment. Sangha Pratova, revel in Sangha means company. Sangha Vihinaha, or you are without company means joy and solitude. Four categories are saying, four options. Yasya Brahmani Ramate Chittam, this is the trump, this is the takeaway from the verse. Yasya Brahmani Ramate Chittam, he whose mind rests in Brahman, he who has achieved that unbelievable task of getting his mind anchored onto the truth, nothing other than the truth, for such a person, he is happy, happy, indeed he is happy. Whatever, whatever, whatever. But in order to get this state, you must slog out of your skin rest of your life. You will have to do phenomenal sadhana. That's why I said, this is not a practice. Now, don't go about practicing this verse. Why you say, Adi Shankaracharya only said, say no. He said, doesn't matter whether you are in uh, uh, an ashram or ha hard rock cafe. Doesn't matter, yoga or bhoga. He only says, therefore, I choose to be in hard rock cafe. <laughs> don't, don't dare use this verse. To justify yourself, many people, many people use this verse to justify themselves because they think of practicing it. You don't practice this verse, you reach a state. So he talks of one who has reached that state of enlightenment. Yoga, yoga as you know is one who goes through the strict adherence of asceticism. You live a life of an ascetic. You live a life of self-discipline, self-control. You go through the three yogas, the karma, bhakti, jnana. You live a life of spiritual discipline. Or bhoga. Bhoga means someone who is reveling in sense enjoyment. Means who is given himself the, the license to go and enjoy the sense objects of the world. Sangha means he is in the company of the people. Sangha Vihina means he lives a life of solitude. All of this doesn't matter. Doesn't matter Shiva for whom? I want to be very clear here. Otherwise Shiva will find uh, every reason to justify. In the Yarka Shiva, for whom is this qualification? spiritual path in the sadhana who want to attain nah, 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 in the answer what is this is nine nah, sonna can you repeat what i said shiva in japan ipudu this was this is for whom adha i also said for whom i'm only repeating i wanted you to repeat it correctly but you wrongly said it hmm. What did I say this verse is meant for? This verse is meant for those who are in the path, obviously who are in sadhana. Adukku vera obvious vera soldering la ninga? Adding appa? Sir, Adna sir, very very careful. This verse is not a sadhana. This is not meant for you and me. This is not meant for sadhaks. 
This is meant for one whose mind is already established in Brahman, Beyond means that. one who has reached that state of, one who has transcended the sadhana, who has, who has got to that self, who has realized the self. Not for you and me. This, not, this is not sadhana. Uh, one who has realized the self, only for them. Saringla, Romba Gandhi sir, please write, on, write it down, write it down, note put go. No, if, so for whom is it? Na? Not for me. Ah, I expected yeah. that answer from you. For whom is it? Yana killa da. Not for me. <laughs> really? Uh, that, uh, the, that is the answer. Not for me. So all of us, please say, not for me. Verse 19, not for me. Not for me, not for me. Moon, what is Solongo? One who is anchored in the truth. Nandati, 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 Moodvati. Uh, so, as I have said, spiritual sadhana is to, is to go by the scriptural injunctions. The scriptures have given has a certain path. You follow the path of yoga. Yoga means the path to evolve. That's about all. Yoga is the path to uplift yourself. So, you follow the scriptural injunctions. You follow the doctrines given in the Shastras to uplift yourself. So you follow the Vedas. You follow the Vedic injunctions. You follow the Vedic directives so that you uplift yourself spiritually. Okay. Now, once you have done that, you follow so diligently, you follow so religiously so that you, you evolve. And one who has reached the state of evolution, thereafter, he doesn't need to follow anything. Another verse is saying, you may be in yoga or bhoga, you may be in company or solitude, it doesn't matter. Why? Because you have already got the very purpose of spiritual sadhana, which is to get your mind on the self. Your mind is already fixed on the self, thereafter doesn't matter. But not for us, we need to get to the scriptural injunctions. So once you are established on the higher, thereafter the lower doesn't matter. And a classic example of this is, you know, Lord Dattatreya, no, I'm asking as if he is your neighbor. I'm saying Lord Dattatreya is one of the, uh, uh, who is Lord Dattatreya? Pa? Uh, who knows Lord, who is Lord Dattatreya? Anybody who knows who is Lord Dattatreya? Rajima? Yaar Tariya, Sedramanji Tariya, who is Lord Dattatreya? <coughs> Guru, Guru of uh, Guru Shiva. Hey Shiva, you are a Guru only. You are a Guru only. Correct. So it is the, the Guru of Lord Shiva. Now what have, of those of you who have ever captured a rare it's a very rare picture or a portrait you will find of Lord Dattatreya. What have you noticed? Do you know? Now why I am turning is, whenever you come to the center, come to my room, there is a very old antique glass carving of Lord Dattatreya. I don't know, I've always was very, very fond of it and uh, I have it uh, that, I don't know, it belongs to my grandmother, great-grandmother. It is so fragile and things. It's a solid glass piece which lights up. So, the carving on the glass, behind of the glass is Lord Dattatreya. And uh, one of the 
important aspect in the context is you know it is lord dattatreya when four dogs are seen the four dogs are always said to be following now i also have four dogs outside our center that doesn't make me any lord any lord huh? the, these dogs are creating nuisance every time they come and mess up the place here uh, but that is not symbolic but here it's very symbolic the dogs four dogs symbolize the four vedas the rigveda yajurveda samaveda and the atharvana veda the four vedas the four dogs and what it is is the dogs are following him he is not following the dogs wherever he went the dogs went behind him which means one who is already established in the truth whatever he does is already sanctioned by the shastras that becomes the shastra so a spiritual practitioner has to abide by the scriptural injunctions to begin with once he reaches a state whatever he does is sanctioned by the shastras look at the transformation one goes through you have to live a life what the vedantic principles are and once you are established in the truth whatever you do becomes a principle for others to follow becomes a standard for those to follow you become the embodiment of knowledge you become the truth you are a man of realization and one who has got his thoughts established in the self or such a person nandati nandati nandakeva is reveling in peace in bliss and happiness irrespective of where you are irrespective of what you do you will find yourself three times he says at all levels of your personality you will find yourself in peace and bliss again i repeat this is not a practice this is not sadhana this is the fruits of one sadhana upon getting your mind established on the self now little earlier i said all throughout our challenges that we are trying to control the mind we are not able to govern our thoughts here the mind is well anchored kutastha rock seated his mind is well anchored onto the truth and this is example of a man of realization getting rock seated kutastha firmly fixed nothing can dislodge his mind of the self right we'll come back om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवावशिष्यते ओम शांति 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 हरि ओम